Asia, more than half of humanity. Three and a half billion people live in this continent in very different natural surroundings and with great ethnic differences. The majority can be grouped together in six countries, including China and India, the two most populated nations on the planet. Highly advanced technologies exist side by side with primitive forms of agriculture, which continues to be the dominant sector throughout the continent and is of vital importance for the food security of billions of people. The major economic and social transformations that are taking place have not radically changed the general picture. The vast majority of low-income families survive in rural areas with activities linked to agriculture and animal raising. This is how the greatest number of the poor in an absolute sense live in Asia today. The condition of women today takes on very different aspects. The progress made by women in cities, with education, in their professional choices and in the social importance they have thus gained, often conceals the reality of hundreds of millions of rural women constantly looking for water, food and all the resources necessary to guarantee food safety for their families. Uh, the decision making is the men, but uh, the women, they are responsible for uh, the finance, say, uh, money in the family. It's a woman who holds uh, the purse. Bangladesh is a uh, patriarchal society where women, men, women do not have equal relationship. Women are uh, subordinate and inferior. But for the last few years, we have been working. Women of Bangladesh have been uh, struggling and uh, they have been continuing their movements for women and gender equality and a process of empowerment has started. Discrimination between the sexes is still strong. Families tend to prefer boys and in some countries the percentages of abortions and deaths due to malnutrition are much higher for girls. In China, a country undergoing great changes with a strong migration from the countryside to the cities, 22% of the world's population has only 7% of the arable land, and women represent 46% of the agricultural labor force. I'm 64 and a widow. I live alone with one of my children and look after the orchard. He works in the fields. We grow wheat, potatoes, beans and broad beans. The expansion of agricultural production has allowed women to add income produced in the home to that from their work in the fields, for example, by raising angora rabbits, and has drastically reduced food shortages in the whole of the country, although the per capita extension of cultivated plots is considerably less than the average. <laughs> Rice is a staple food for more than half the world's population and has spread from Asia to other continents. Women have a decisive role in all the phases of its production and their contribution represents between 50% and 90%. The countries of southeastern Asia traditionally major consumers of rice, have today become exporters on the international market too, thanks to women's work. There isn't a grain of rice that hasn't passed through a woman's hands, as they say in Indonesia. Aquaculture, which in rural areas provides food and extra income for families, is a collateral activity carried out mainly by women. Almost 90% of world production comes from Asia. 120 million people in the world carry out activities linked to fishing, with more than 50 million tons of fish used annually for food. Different techniques of conservation and drying are used alongside the sale of fresh fish on the market. Thanks to irrigation and the use of fertilizers, crops have far greater yields 
and more specialized and profitable products can be grown, such as flowers. But a new ecological conscience is also growing amongst women against the uncontrolled use of pesticides. We um, use a lot of uh, pesticides in our food. Still in our culture, in our homes, it is the women who cook the food and prepare the food. So I think more and more women are conscious of this and we try to use less food additives and fl flavorings and things like that, artificial flavorings in our food. Despite the continual expansion of megalopolises, the majority of Asian families are still country dwellers. In India, more than 15 million rural families are headed by women. Estimates put the native, tribal population of the Indian subcontinent at 70 million. They live near the forests, practicing subsistence agriculture and gathering natural products. In recent years, state organizations have granted incentives to the tribal communities to manage the forest resources. This has given greater importance to the work of women, who are mainly responsible for gathering and processing products such as tamarind, nux vomica, honey, nuts, roots, resins and others, which have gained in value due to the new ecological demand. Major campaigns are underway throughout the continent to increase schooling and reduce illiteracy rates, which are still very high for adult women. Vocational and professional training courses are becoming more widespread and also have as their aim the creation of a new class of female entrepreneurs. They can help women who would love to start in and give their experience and knowledge. So it was started as a business counseling uh, unit. Almost 2,000 uh, ladies annually come for business counseling and help village rural women to come and uh, have some knowledge of how and to be self-sustaining. I am uh, start uh, with one public booth and uh, cold storage for uh, bakery items. I am 36 years old. I have two sons. Uh, I am to Mundukravaal and Tem Chapala. I am self-employment to come forward with uh, my own self-business. The policy of giving credit to women is now widely recognized as a decisive resource for development. It is precisely in Asia that micro-loans for groups of Asian women have produced the most satisfactory results. The beneficiaries have a high rate of solvency as shown by the very large percentage of loans paid back. This opportunity creates forms of mutual aid between women and is an important economic tool of empowerment. There are very many small individually run businesses or cooperatives which try to increase activities that are collateral to agriculture, such as the production of raw silk. Skill and patience are essential to raise silkworms. At exactly the right moment, they have to be put on large trays, divided into rings, and the cocoon will develop inside this. The cocoon is then boiled before the silkworm becomes a butterfly and then spun. Expert female hands give rise to these hanks of fine silk, appreciated the world over. In Asia, the main objective of rural women, aided in this by the FAO and other international organizations, is to create opportunities that will eradicate poverty from the countryside, reaching equality with men in food security. The future of the continent is in the hands of these young women, 
in the respect of their cultural diversity. Oh, no.